Hi everybody, Doug Miles along with uh, Don Henderson here on uh, Saturday, uh, October 8th. As uh, Don, uh, we haven't done a, a video in a while, but first of all, welcome back to Sarasota. I know we had a little bit of a rough go last week, but uh, we both survived, huh? Yeah, I'll tell you, it was uh, a little storm, uh, I'll tell you, really unduplicated in the state of Florida. We never saw a real Section 4 come in, and it was really a split between 4 and 5. Right. So. We were very fortunate here. We didn't have any problem. Sarasota, in, <coughs> historically, has been quite uh, fortunate in these storms because of the barrier islands tend to protect uh, at least uh, you know, downtown Sarasota in our area. Unfortunately, to our south, uh, Venice area and uh, Englewood and Northport and even Fort Myers, uh, they had a, a worse time. Oh, absolutely. In fact, Fort Myers, the airport was closed until Wednesday morning. The president finally got in Wednesday to oversee the damage and try to get together with uh, Governor DeSantis and get some money for everybody. And But of course, uh, the islands out there were really wiped out. And uh, as you say, Fort Myers especially really got hit hard. Yeah, we uh, continue to think about them. And uh, unfortunately, it's going to be a while before a lot of people can get back in their homes. And so Sanibel. Oh, Sanibel my God. Well. Sanibel yeah. got wiped out. Wiped out, yeah. But anyway, just to kind of, uh, you know, bring it back to reality, we had the storm, but uh, talk about things less important, but people are interested in, and we are as well, at uh, uh, baseball playoffs uh, starting this week. Kind of a unique uh, new format of baseball this year. This is the first year they've done the 12 teams, right? Yeah, I, I think everybody's pretty happy with it. <coughs> excuse me. But uh, <coughs> the Mets got off to a shaky start. Uh, excuse me. Last yeah. night, yeah. A little bit of a throat there. Uh, they got off to a shaky start last night. Scherzer didn't, uh, didn't come through for them, and uh, Bucks now got his back against the wall because he had a great season. He lost the three games in Atlanta, which took him out of contention for uh, winning the National League East. So now he had to play in the wild card against the Padres. The Padres hit four home runs last night off the pitching staff, and <clears throat> so his back's against the wall at City Field. they they got to win now, or it's going to be sort of a mediocre season for them after a great year. Yeah, fortunately for the Mets, the in the playoff round, if you have the home team, you get all three games at home. So exactly they, they right. They have that. But yeah, we had a chance to see Buck uh, several years down here in Sarasota, of course, when he managed the Orioles in spring training. Uh, first year with the Mets after about, what, five years uh, on in the, the broadcast lines, booth. Yeah, yeah. So on the sidelines. Did a pretty good job, I guess you'd have to say. Did an excellent job, an excellent job. And he had all his ducks in a row when he went to Atlanta with a chance in a three-game series and a one-game lead. All he had to do was win one of the three, and he would have gone into the last series of the season, at least in a tie for first place. But unfortunately, all three of his top uh, starters all lost. Rays, on the other hand, they had a tough uh, loss yesterday in the first game played uh, against uh, Cleveland. Terrific game, 2-1. to one. One. Very, very good game. And uh, I tell you, Terry Francona has done a remarkable job in Cleveland. He's up for the manager of the year, I think, uh, <laughs> Certainly, he's going to be considered for manager of the year, and a surprise would be the manager of the Baltimore Orioles, who had their first winning season. Hyde. And, uh, Hyde yeah. has had, had his first winning season. He's got to be up for manager of the year. So uh, there are a few uh, outstanding performances by managers you didn't expect, uh, and even Buck Showalter's got to be up for uh, possibly being manager of the year in the National League. And Tony La Russa uh, stepping down as manager of yeah. the White Sox, probably some health issues uh, very, well. very, very, kind of sad to see that, yeah. very, very disappointing. Yeah. Uh, his team just uh, was odds on the choice to win going into the season. Especially after last year when they made the playoffs. Just, but it just didn't work for him this no. year. And then he had the heart problems. And he announced last week that. Uh, and there's another issue. He didn't mention what it was. Yeah, another health issue. Yeah, so, this is yeah. it. He's not coming exactly. back. Yeah. But uh, then, of course, your Phillies. Uh, down, of course, uh, involved with the Phillies broadcast for many years. Uh, great comeback win for them against the Cards. How about that? 2 nothing in St. Louis. Bush Stadium. Uh, very tough to win there. Cardinals are a great home team. Great support. And uh, the Phillies were down 2 nothing. And uh, I haven't had a chance to read too much about the uh, uh, diagnosis by the experts. <laughs> but I, I got to wonder about the managerial decisions. Some in the bad State choices Louis. there. Oh. Right? Bad decisions. I think, I think they made some bad choices in the ninth inning, but great for the Phillies because they came away with a 6-3 to three win. And the Phillies, of course, have not been in the playoffs in quite a while. 11 years. 11 years. Yeah. 11 years yeah. they have not been in the playoffs and uh, just did Since squeeze they, uh, in this year. Since they won the World Series against the Rays. Yeah, yeah. just did yeah. squeeze in this year. 
And another team that had not been in the playoffs for even longer, Seattle, uh, wins their game against Toronto. Yes, them out. four nothing against a very, very good hitting team. I was surprised at that last night. Not necessarily that Seattle won. I think they are a little bit of a favorite playing at home. But uh, Toronto's got great offensive capability. And I was very surprised they were shut out 4 nothing in the first game. Yeah, yeah. Seattle, of course, uh, uh, years ago under Lou Pinella had some great seasons. And then they've had a big drought, of course, the yeah. last uh, 15, 20 years. So. All-time winning team in yeah. Seattle. Uh, then they lost to the Yankees in the playoffs, which was a major disappointment. But uh, this year, uh, they held themselves together, got into the playoffs, and now, as you say, uh, winning game one, four nothing against the Blue Jays. Be interesting to see what happens today and tomorrow. There's some new teams, obviously, getting back in the playoffs. The Padres, uh, which hadn't been in the playoffs for a long time either, and of course the, the Seattle and uh, even Cleveland coming back uh, from a couple of rough seasons. But uh, but teams you haven't seen in a while, particularly San Diego and Seattle. Exactly. Nice to see Seattle get a little bit of recognition and. Uh, to get into the playoffs, as you say, I think they're in the 20s, 21 years or something right. that they okay. haven't been in. Yeah. <clears throat> so that I think that turned out to be a great move, and uh, they just snuck in too. Of course, the Yankees now and Astros, Dodgers, and uh, Braves uh, get the bye, so they, they wait a few days before they play. Uh, I still like the Astros to win it. I think they've got the best team. I'm not even too sure the Yankees are going to get the, to the final round, to be honest with you. Uh, they're sort of up and down. They right. score runs. They score a lot of runs when they hit home runs, and they score no runs when they don't. So it's going to be interesting to see whether their pitching uh, <coughs> can carry them through the semifinal series to get them into the league championship series. I think the Astros have something to prove, at least in their minds. They want to win another one to prove that one that they supposedly cheated in, which they did cheat in. That was proven they did. Yes. They it did. wasn't a fluke. So they no. want to win another one. But they have great pitching. They have a great overall team, great defense, and uh, they can play small ball, they can play long ball. Uh, I think they have the best personnel. I think they have the best team. Uh, that Dusty always, Baker, right? Still, Dusty Baker. He, he Dusty finally Baker. gets a chance maybe to win the whole thing. He needs it. He's, uh, he's been yeah. here quite a few times now yeah. and hadn't gotten the golden ring. So you, you hope uh, Dusty can make it this time. I thought he was, I think he probably thought he was done the last time he left. Yeah. The, the Reds, wasn't it the last managerial yeah. job? Or, yeah. or was it the he got there with Nationals? Cincinnati. He got there with the He got there Nationals. with the Nationals. He got there with the Cincinnati, he got he got there with San Cubs. Francisco. He's gotten there, but he just hadn't gotten to the golden ring. Yeah, so uh, if you're a Dusty Baker fan, seems like a nice guy, good guy, uh, you root for him. And he took over a difficult situation after the cheating yeah, after scandal. After the cheating, right. And then he got and him. And he held that team together. Got him to defend it last year, now he got him back this year to see, we'll see how he makes out, but you got to think he's the odds on favorite to yeah. get to this World Series. Yeah. Of course, football down here. Uh, the big story is not necessarily on the field with the Bucks, but uh, we're all hearing about the uh, personal lives of the quarterback. Uh, more than I want to know about, but it's all over the place. With yeah, it's a, when, you, <laughs> when you make that kind of money, you have kind of a personality, and everybody wants to write about you. And That's all un- you heard about the last week. About, yeah, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. Tom and Giselle. Really, really <laughs> unfortunate. I, I, you know, I thought they had a pretty good thing going for a long period of time, and uh, you know, I don't know any of the background and, and none of my business right. anyway, but uh, I just feel sorry that it's not working out for both of them. Of course, uh, you knew the coach or know the coach pretty well now, Todd Bowles, uh, back in your days doing yeah. the Temple games. Uh, tough situation for him to take over from Arians uh, after last season, who kind of is upstairs now. I'm yes. not sure exactly what he, his job is now, but Nobody it's, a, does. it's a difficult situation. Isn't yes. It? Yeah, I, I think Todd has got a great shot. He's got a team that's very competitive. I don't think, uh, as you and I were talking at breakfast this morning, uh, I just don't think that the Bucks are as good as they were last year or certainly the year before. Well, they won it all, yeah. And uh, so when, when Brady made this decision to come back, uh, I thought it was very, really skeptic whether they were going to be able to really be competitive and get into the deep end of the finals. Uh, now they're 2-2, two and two, and as he said on TV last night, uh, they've played two games at home. They've lost both of them. Both home games already. And, yeah. uh, you know, that's not a good sign. No, that, that's not a not a – championship teams don't win, don't lose their games at home. No, no. And he's, maybe 7-1, uh, and one, maybe 6-2 and two at the worst. Yeah. So, yeah. And then uh, we'll wrap it up just a little college, of course. Uh, uh, my USF Bulls are really awful. They play Cincinnati today, a team that is uh, pretty strong in the top 25 in the country, leaving the conference after this year. So it's been a rough go for Jeff Scott and the Bulls. I've I followed them the last, uh, what, six, seven years, maybe longer than that. With, uh, there's now four different coaches. 
Well, I don't know if they're going to have a conference <laughs> next year. I mean, uh, they're it really, really, they're really, really deteriorates after. Yeah, this they're year. really in desperate shape, and you know, my old school that I broadcast so many games for Temple University is not in a better position. Than Same as the Bulls, almost. Is, that's right. Yeah. It's the University of South Florida. So, both of those schools are uh, in uh, real jeopardy of having to step back from football altogether, at least from Division One, and go into a lesser, you know, two or three or whatever. And try to compete there because they just can't recruit well enough. No. And uh, you know they keep talking about building a stadium in Tampa for how are you going to build a stadium for a team that wins no games? And they don't draw anyway at Tampa no. Stadium, no. which is an NFL facility. And so, that's the uh, same as Temple. Temple plays. You they know, play Franklin uh, Lincoln at, at Financial. Lincoln Field, yeah. right. Play Lincoln Financial, but uh, it's the pro facility for the Eagles, and it's not conducive to being on campus. Uh, they have a difficult time recruiting. And, uh, I, you know, they keep talking, same thing. Oh, we're going to build a stadium on campus. Well, how can you build a stadium on campus when you have no money? Right. And the city, state, and federal government aren't going to give you any money to build a no. stadium. And you can't put together a winning program. How can you put a, build a stadium? Three strikes already <laughs> against you. Yes. Yeah, and the same with Tampa with uh, the Rays. If, if, if city, you know, the citizens don't want to pay for a stadium for the Rays. You can't no, make they them. do not. Why would they pay for a stadium for a college football team? No, That's a they, state college anyway, state yeah. university. They so, do not want yeah. to pay for the, the days of uh, the communities paying city, state, local. I think they're not all now. over. I think they're all over this. Yeah. And, especially and with, rightly so. I mean, look, <laughs> you know, you're paying so much in taxes anyway. Why would you want to contribute to yeah. a money-making opportunity for a business that uh, you're not going to get anything out of. And especially now with the economy as shaky as it is, yeah, little, uh, right now, interest so. rates going up as high as they are, a stadium that you could have built, uh, let's say, three years ago for uh, a billion, probably going to cost you two billion At now. least. Or, you know, you know <laughs> any kind of representative, representative yeah. stadium. So uh, I can't see it happening. I can't see it happening for the Rays. I can't see it happening for Temple. I can't see it happening for you. University of South Florida, I think those schools are right on the brink of saying, hey, we're not we're not in this league. Yeah, the whole Rays story, which, you know, they were uh, talking a lot about all the split season, well, that ended, you know, the split season between Montreal and that's all gone. And you don't even hear anything about the stadium talk in Tampa anymore. No. I mean, no. they have, what, four years left, I believe, on the lease in <laughs> That is correct. And it's, so they'll, anybody, they'll play it out, and then because uh, they don't have enough time now to build a new state unless they start today. Well, that's the thing. Pat Williams has been saying all along, and he tried to get them to move this, you know, to Orlando, and then right. uh, also Charlotte uh, wants to get a major league team down there. But even if they made a decision tomorrow at the end of the baseball season, nineteen or twenty twenty two. It's got to take you at least three years to build a stadium. Minimum to have it fully ready. Yes, right? to have yeah. it ready. So uh, you know. Then, you, then what do you do there? Piecemeal? Well, I, mean, I don't know what you do. No, no. So Anyway, that's the, the latest going on uh, with that, and we just want to do kind of a, a video since we uh, hadn't done a video in a while. But, Don, uh, glad you're back down. You'll be down until uh, Thanksgiving time, and then you'll come back again in January. We'll, so be here, we'll do this more frequently. We'll be here until May. We'll get the exhibition baseball season underway. Baltimore looks like they're going to make some moves again. And uh, congratulations. We'll finally see a Baltimore team that's uh, maybe really good. Yeah. <laughs> congratulations to them for the progress they made this year. And let's hope they can duplicate that in 23. Great. For Don Henderson, Doug Miles, thanks for watching, everybody.